never left it my friend punk rock never leaves you once it's in you you got it forever even if you go down different roads in life it's uh something's part just always in you always with me it kind of carried to my mentality the way i approach my life the names have been changed to protect the innocent my friend it's always that way yeah. was that before the humble gods before humble gods yeah, this was back in the, actually the early Fullerton punk scene, yeah. the, where we all met way back, way back in the day. And back the, in the uh, 80s, to yeah. me, I, I call that the golden era of punk rock. I just think the early eighties had the mid eighties. Yeah. That uh, mid eighties, you say? Yeah. Early eighties, I mean, mid eighties. Yeah. yeah Brad was doing yeah, shit back then. He was early. booking shows. He, we had doggy style. Uh, we were subculture. We had heavy dirt. We had uh, adolescence and you know DI. The whole area was just. You know, OC punk rock. So is distortions right there. The yeah, I remember the, the, the warehouse in Placentia. Agent Orange, everybody in that one little hub. And so a lot had come out of Orange County, and it's kind of weird that we sort of kind of came full circle again, and we're doing stuff with Brad and the, the ball here, and right. we got Clinton here yeah. ripping on guitar. So and Joey and Eddie Tatter, of course, the legendary Tatter brothers. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we grew up down in. Uh, they grew up on this house in, in Fullerton on State College, is like a historic house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the it's basement was the punk rock rehearsal basement, right? <laughs> that's yeah. right, yeah, we think yeah. about it down the street. A lot of stuff happened in that basement, that's for yeah. sure. It's a lot of history went down way back in the day, and then everyone kind of went on their <laughs> own way. Of course, they've been playing with DI for years, and, um, you know, I went on my way, did my thing, started the Cottonmouth Kings and Suburban Noise Records. We wound up putting out DIs on the front, Western Front record at Sub Noise just because it felt DI, you know, would, would be legendary to have on Sub Noise Records, and... And then we, uh, the Tatter Brothers would come in and Clinton and play, you know, studio sessions with us on Cottonmouth King Records, Big B Records, wherever, you know, they just start, we started doing studio sessions, writing some punk stuff for the Cottonmouth Kings, and then we just kind of clicked and we really <coughs> had a lot of fun in those sessions and just kept doing more and more songs and that's how this whole thing kind of evolved very organically and like we just went in doing songs and before we know it, we had a lot of songs and we wanted to find a home for them and then we kind of had this idea of starting this group and then Dirtball um, when he joined the Cottonmouth Kings and then I heard him, heard him uh, doing his thing flexing over some punk rock rhythms and it was just it was great just it, it took it went somewhere I never thought it would go that's for sure yeah it's a real real strong chemistry there you know yeah. in terms of uh, the, all the songs and how it all culminated put together and uh, you know it was real it just flowed real fucking easy real good you know yeah and then we just kind of this, this record kind of came out and we just we put it together and then uh, I don't know it's just one of those things you, it was, as sometimes things in the universe align and things just click right and it just feels right and the song you know this just all came together and it feels like we created something fresh and new and it's definitely fun and exciting for us and at the end of the day we want to enjoy what we're doing if we're going to do it Hey man, what was the question? The x Pistols began when we started doing studio sessions. The Tatter Brothers and Clinton would come in on some studio sessions, and we were... There's an element on every Cottonmouth King record that we make where we try to infuse some punk rock into it somehow. And uh, the Tatter Brothers, you know, had their, D, their record out with uh, D.I. on Sub Noise, and then they, we started some session work together. It started like No Escape and All or Nothing, a couple of those songs, yeah. and then... Um, Wow, we just started writing songs together, and and those song we had putting together so many songs, we we thought it needed its own record, basically. And then Dirtball came into the mix. Eddie, how how do you see it going down? You got better memory than me. Nah, well, it just uh, you know it all kind of went down. This too. real easy to uh, to I mean, like in terms of the chemistry and writing the songs, putting them together, it just flowed really easily. I mean, it's great working with Brad, uh, you know, 
and things just seemed to flow and we started accumulating a lot of songs and uh, you know we talked about what we we're going to do with them you know so we just kept on recording them and recording them and recording them and uh, you know we had some really long sessions down at you know Yorktown and some other studios where it uh, where it all happened and uh, so things just kind of fell into place that way and uh, you know I'm stoked it's right here right now you know um, because it's a it's a pretty ferocious fucking collection of uh, of uh, you know, like uh, like throwing a brick through a fucking window type of music, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you know. Uh, it's it's real comfortable to me. Definitely puts the pee in the punk. You gotta have the, that that Fluffy. fan head in the pit that just <laughs> ripping it out. Yeah, I don't think it was a super prolific statement. I think I was just in jest, just saying that. We're just letting it. We're just opening up the engine on this record. We're just doing a full-blown punk record. I've, I haven't done one in a couple of years since the Humble Gods, and you know we tap into it like I said with the Cop Mount Kings here and there. But to to get with it the, with these guys has just been amazing because the Tatter Brothers have been playing together for so long. You got to start playing with with your with your dad. So when you see these two in the studio communicate, they speak in their own <laughs> language that maybe only. Uh, the a little pain, a little pain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people think we're probably nuts, you know, but that's cool. Who isn't fucking nuts nowadays? You know, I mean, yeah. you're nuts. I mean, everybody's nuts. Really. Really it's collaboration. A, it's just their own will, a way of uh, you know, of communicating, putting music down, laying it down that way. You know, yeah. It's easy to understand that way. You break it down into little clips. It's actually, it's kind of comical though. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, if you were an outsider and you were like looking at us yeah. do it, you'd be like, what the fuck are these guys doing? <laughs> well, that's true. And if you were to record it and have it, like, and people listen to it, it'd be kind of like really out there, you know? But that's cool. It, it's straight <laughs> Neanderthal. And <laughs> 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 Yeah. But, I, you know, it's totally understandable if you think about it, you know? If you yeah. listen to it, it's totally understandable, so. And that, yeah, as far as that, I don't really follow by I never have really followed any particular rules or sets. If, if I feel like I want to do something, I do it, you know? It's like, that's why I like my bread. Yeah. And just did it. So we're tonight we're working on into some acoustic stuff. I mean, there's people are tripping. Oh, how can you do the X pistol night? But you're in the cop. I can't. You're in the rap group. But I, to me, it's just I, I like a lot of different styles of music, and I don't think I put any limitations on what I want to play or how I want to play. It. And I think just playing with open-minded people and being around open-minded people, they it's really comes down to do we have a good time writing songs and, and making and making music together. And the answer is yes, and that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Start with Clinton over there since he's got the beret. Uh, <laughs> definitely the damned. Uh, you know, GBH, Peter and the Test Two Babies was a, an album that I got early on, which is a really cool record that I, I learned a lot <laughs> from. And you know, Ron Emery and and these guys, obviously Di and, and every every guitar player that's been in there was a huge influence on on my playing. You know, Rick Agnew. Yeah, Rick Agnew. Yeah, all the Agnew brothers. You Every know, one of those guys, yeah. Figuring that stuff out. And uh, the big, the way that I sound is, is definitely a part of that, you know, for sure. Killer. Yeah, I mean, there's there. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, it's just you know, you it's like it's like it's like a uh, big piece of cloth, you know, that's intertwined with all these guys that you know, from from uh, you know, from Tia Sowell to Mike Roach, you know, Steve Soto, you know, Casey Royer, of course. I mean, you know, I mean, Casey Royer is uh, a huge influence on me. He has been for years, and uh, you know, um, you know, uh, it's 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 kind of cool to play with you know, people that have been in the scene for so long and be a part of that. And, uh, you know, like, you know, GBH, I mean, there's all kinds of great bands, you know, you know that have come out of Fullerton and, and not Fullerton, but, you know, um, um, you know, there's a lot of the bands just like that, you know, Social Distortion's a great band, they've been around, you know, and they came from, you know, blocks away from the street, and it all kind of happened down at Sherpa Studio, you know, so there's a lot of pillars in the punk rock community that I definitely look up to and that, uh, that uh, you know, are part of the reason why I do what I do. You know, what was one of the cool things about punk when I started really liking is different parts of the country had different sounds. Like you had the, the East Coast had their own brand of hardcore. The West Coast definitely had their our own sound and our own approach to it. Bands in the Midwest, you just go around and, and all these little scenes is really before the internet is really, but is there's this underground kind of railroad when you go from city to city and all these different crash exactly. punk houses and crash pads when you're torn through and. Yeah. 
and you, you be, get exposed to all kinds of different bands from different parts of the country, and that sure. it, it's kind of cool that I, I, I like, and I got you get influenced from all types of different things. So I like like Minor Threat. I like a lot of the East Coast bands. I, I love the West Coast bands, uh, Suicidal, um, yeah. Circle Jerks. I even love like you know Penny Pennywise, No Effects. Just so many great bands. Yeah. You know? Adolescence. There's a yes. lot that came out of this pot here, that's for sure. Yeah. But definitely, I mean, yeah, Orange I mean, County, has, there's a certain sound about Orange County that has that uh, that octaves and that, that certain style, you know, and uh, so it's, uh, you know, I like the East Coast bands too, man. And they're pretty fucking comical too. And then the new. <laughs> <right? Yeah. laughs> no, Vinny, Sigma. Yeah, yeah get guys. back the car. Yeah, get, get out. Uh, I think the rye bread. I mean, you know, who said that, you know? <laughs> In the park after dark, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Place Placentia, and we were in Tucker Town. <laughs> no, he is from Placentia. We we're from Fortin, and uh, you know, in the punk scene. Cross town connection. That's it. We played. We played the same dives. We swam in the same cesspool. Yeah. Played the flash dance. Played the Fender's, dance. Fender's ballroom and all the good stuff. Actually, I think but it was in Fortin Jail. Placentia Boys Club. Bum rap, man. He could have been on bum rap. Bum rap, yeah, dude. <laughs> the bum rap. Shoot to kill! <laughs> nice crack, Derek. <laughs> well, that was pretty simple. The uh, Dirt Ball was, uh, has been uh, doing his own music for years as a solo artist, the Dirt Ball. He was uh, signed to Suburban Noise Records, uh, which, are, which is our label. And he joined the Cottonmouth Kings um, in this last year. So we've been working and touring together for years. And uh, I proposed the idea of him kind of rapping over one of these punk tracks just because I thought it would be an interesting fusion. And it just, it, once he, you know, once he kind of heard him on one of the tracks, I, that I was just sold. I'm like, we got to do this whole record. Because at first I told these guys that they weren't really prepared for, like, you know, I, I was pretty much going to do all the vocals or whatever. With the, it was just me right, up, and then right, when I brought yeah. Dirt Ball in, you go, huh, that's interesting, but I think, you know, the, the record speaks for itself, and then Dirt Ball, it was, he was open-minded to do it, he killed it. And Nailed it. Yeah, we were <laughs> doing some mixing on our greatest hits, and I remember going up to Brad's studio, and uh, I was like, you got to fucking hear this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 and uh, pretty out of control. Yeah, and I haven't really told them too much that uh, you guys knew I was working on it, but you didn't know exactly what was. Right. Once yeah. we got all the music and we had ideas for songs, then we went. Me and Dirtball just went in the studio and just did all the vocals, and then, you know, came in and did backups and all that stuff. But for the most part, we just kind of really marinated on uh, driving the songs in a certain way. You know, we had a great time making it, and I think we really took a new twist and spin. And if you can't do something original or add something new to it then you know then then you're not progressing you know so we're all about pushing things forward and trying new things and everyone's been super open-minded as far as you know they just want to make sure there's petrol and the gas and it was you know it was they they handled the they handled the you know the music oh my god to such a, a degree you know the church the, we're we, could, we couldn't fuck those songs up, but we tried. You know? Yeah, and that's the whole thing. And even getting together and jamming, you know, and doing it, uh, you know, it's like that in the delivery aspect of it. You know, it's 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 that it's, it's delivered that way live, same as it is on the recording. And that's a big part of it for me. You know, uh, to be able to go do that. It's, you know, it, it's it's in the pocket line. Yeah, it's fast, it's crunchy, and it's 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 syncopated. It's it's it's, it's there. It's all of our different types of punk rock or whatever you want to call it, different types of tracks and influences and. It was just, it was just really just making a record we wanted to make for ourselves. We just got in, just started doing songs. Yeah. It, just, it just turned into its own thing, you know. We're, we're excited to share it with the world, and you may piss some people off, but you know it may not. You know, yeah, it's controversy. I love it. I think it, <coughs> at the end of Life's the day, controversial. It's a fun record. It's ultra violent, kind of like a maybe Natural Born Killers movie. Like that's we kind of did this whole theme on the record, so it's kind of super over the top, but. We're just, we looked at like making a movie kind of, you know, just, that's kind of how we approach like the vocals and everything. We approach to make like, let's make this kind of like an action movie, you know. Yeah, I mean, theatrical when you lay them down. Yeah. 
What was the question, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> how did <laughs> we meet? How did we meet? We met where? We wound up in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, when I was a kid, they left me there, and I just, I didn't know what the fuck to do. You know, I was left. <laughs> what was the question? Yeah. Not today. Shoot the kid, the debris. See another day. I mean, I think that, you know, there's always been an element of punk rock and Cottonmouth King's music and the, and, and the people that like that side of Cottonmouth King's, you know, it's definitely strictly for the hardcore, fast punk rock, in your face, you know, knock your teeth out kind of record, like very blistering, very, very high powered, a lot of energy and, uh, it is what it is, you know, I no expectations, we just try, we, like I said, we, we love the record, we're putting it out and hopefully people will, <coughs> will hear what we're hearing and feel what we're feeling, you know. Some people hate it or some people like, love it. You know, that's not for us to decide. We just made the record that we want to make. We just do what we do. Yes, they have. Just one. Fine question on the blank show. TV. <laughs> what do you think of that? Yeah. <laughs> the one and only X Pistol show. We got up there and uh, really, I think we have one practice, two. How many practices? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I think just I think it was like one and yeah. one and a half. Actually, just together let it roll, right? Roll it, yeah, <coughs> straight, straight out of the trail five. five. You can see it. Google, <laughs> Google it. It's Google funny. It. It's, it's funny. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna be fun. fun live once we dive off you know. the edge of a cliff. Just go. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I think we busted out four songs. Four yeah. songs. That was great. Might not have been too pretty. It was pretty. It was pretty great. I didn't want to stop. It was, it was all rather too quick, actually. Yeah. I mean, we could probably go around the room since we probably all have a different answer. I'll take Bob Marley for 20, please. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Being the rapper that I am, I have to say, and our talk today, Easy E, would be one that would have been the pinnacle for me. How about Chad Nugent, maybe? I don't know if he's still around. I think he's alive. Play with Chad Nugent? Chad Nugent? That would be that's, true. That's, right. a, that's a true rock and roll answer there, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's a fucking rock and roll <laughs> answer. Wait, no, Tango. I don't care. How about you, Joe? Uh, I don't know. Um, they were the anthrax. No. I don't know. Some New York guys like that with fast feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd have to say, uh, you know, I'd have to go with The Clash. Yeah, 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 fine yeah, answer. Fine answer. <laughs> the Cal Jam 10. Cal Jam 10. <laughs> <laughs> My enemies. Yeah, I tell you what, you're looking at it right now. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> what what relative answer. humidity is the sweat on your balls when you're doing your cousin? <laughs> 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 brutal, man. Yeah. Uh, family don't show. Don't, don't tell that kind of joke. Yeah. Well, what does a butthole and a nine volt battery have in common? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know you don't want to do. It. What is it? No, you just fucked it up. I did. Didn't fucked I? What it is up. it? What is it? You uh, just fucked it up. Uh, you, you know you don't want to do it, but eventually you're going to put your tongue on it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, oh my man! <laughs> you blew the delivery. I but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> shit. I'm shaking <laughs> the cobwebs out of here. It's Come better on. than drawing a blank. Shoot to kill. I mean, it's just pretty much. Say, if you're gonna draw your weapon, you better, you better not miss. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, like I said, that the, the uh, our when we did this record, it was like an ultra violent fantasy record, kind of like. So the video, uh, Sonny Tipton actually directed it. He's in the film business. We want we wanted to make it like a mini action movie. You know what I mean? Us busting up a child porn ring, that's what was really going on in the safe. So we're like raiding the child porn house and actually saving the day. So good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We used a few guns, but you know, what the hell, what the fuck, you know? But part two of that video comes up, the actual outcome of the story, the second half of the story comes out on a track called Wild Side. And we shot a video that's the far, it's like a mini action movie. We just want to have fun with it. We shot like a mini action movie. It wanted to be like a video game, just, you know, that kind of same action. Hey, what's up? This X with the X Pistols right here on Blank TV. Dangerous music for dangerous people for Davis video. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. He's dangerous, so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Right, 
Shoot the kill, get the thrill, someone's gonna die I can see a weapon, they can see no more Fuck a flash wound, hear the guns roar You be the front line, let the rain pour I'm a point to the heart, all we'll out Shoot the kill Shoot the kill